Hello, in this lecture we'll continue on the test type problems, the smaller problems that could be in format of multiple choice questions. We have a company has fixed costs of 35000 a contribution margin of 25%. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. If expected sales are 200,000, what is the margin of safety as a percentage of sales? So first we're gonna think about, okay, what is the margin of safety? How can we calculate the margin of safety? I'm gonna put a colon there, we're gonna calculate that. That's gonna be the sales less minus the break even. So that's how we're gonna calculate that. So do we have the material to uh, do that? We have first the 200,000 is going to be the sales the break even we don't have that so we're going to need that that's something that we will need in order to calculate the margin of safety and so that'll be our end calculation so i'll put that'll indent that out there and that is what we are looking for now once we get that then we need to get the percentage and that will just be the margin of safety divided by the sales that's how we're going to get as uh, margin of safety as a percentage of sales so now we gotta we gotta figure out what the break even will be how are we going to get the break even the break even formula will be will be here it's fixed cost over the contribution margin percent so you can memorize that you can kind of derive that you probably want to have that somewhere handy for you when you're taking test questions and that's going to then eat the fixed cost given to us up here being the 35 i'm going to put a comma thousand i'm going to put alt enter to go underneath and we're going to divide that by 25 percent which is also given in the problem up here as the contribution margin ratio i'm going to go ahead and underline that and hit enter then go back on the cell then we can center it so that's our ratio that we need to do our division problem therefore then we can take this equals the 35,000 just going to calculate this divided by 0.25 25% is 0.25 and that will give us the 140 so that's the break even point so 140 so we can plug that in here that equals this 140 we just calculated right there and therefore the margin of safety equals if we think we're going to get 200,000 we can say, well, how much over the break even where we make no profit are we? Minus the 140. Well, we have a 60,000 margin of safety. Well, what's the margin of safety as a percentage of sales then? Well, that's going to equal the 60,000 divided by the 200,000. So that's what that's what a ratio is going to be. Now, it's not zero, of course, because that means that there's no decimals right here. So we're going to go to the home tab, numbers, and we can increase. It's going to be 30%. Or we can just hit this percentage and there we have that. So 30%. So what is the margin of safety as a percentage of sales? Anytime you see as a percentage of sales, it's going to be that ratio. It's the 60 over the sales in this case. Next one says that during its most recent fiscal year, the company had total sales of 3,260,000, contribution margin amount of 1,530,000, and pre-tax income of 445,000 what should have been reported as fixed costs in the company's contribution margin income statement for the year in question. All right, so we're gonna do our calculation here. This is a kind of cost of volume calculation and we're gonna start off with the sales, just like we would with an income statement, which would be the, in this case, 3,260,000. But different than a standard income statement, we are gonna subtract from that variable costs and that will then give us the contribution margin and we don't know the variable cost they didn't give us that but they did give us the contribution margin so we know that the contribution margin happens to be 1,530,000 and they didn't ask us for variable cost and we don't really need to figure it out but we might as well because it's there so we we know that the formula for this would then be the 3,260,000 minus variable cost kind of like our x fact the, the unknown and that should equal 
this uh, one million five thirty thousand. So then if we solve for the variable cost, we can see it's going to basically be a subtraction problem, right? So variable cost, then if we solve for this, is going to equal this uh, 3260 minus the 1530000, and that should be the variable cost. If you could see that right here, we could see it's a subtraction problem. Obviously, it's going to be the sales minus the, uh, the contribution margin. And we could double check that by saying, okay, well, does that work? If I pull out the calculator here, does it work to say that 3260 minus 1730? And I know I left off three zeros, but same thing. Yeah, that works. Okay, so that's that one. And then we're going to say that we're going to take the fixed cost, which that's what we're looking for. We don't know that. And then we have the income before tax. It's kind of like net income. Net income before tax. So, and they gave us that number. So once again, we're backing into a number. They gave us the 450,000. So once again, we're backing into this number. So we subtracted these two to get to here. And now we're taking this minus this to get to here. We don't know what this is. And once again, that's gonna be a subtraction problem. You can kind of see it's a subtraction problem by saying, well, if it's this minus this gets to that, then this must be the difference between this and that. If that's unclear, then write it down algebraically. We can say that it's 1,530,000 minus the 445, oh, I'm sorry, minus the fixed cost, the variable equals, put a space, the four equals the 445 comma. And then if you write it down this way, you can see algebraically that, that basically it's going to be a subtraction problem because we're going to subtract the 1,530 from each side. So the fixed cost then would equal the 445,000 minus the 1,530. And there, and there we would have that. And, and then we'd have to flip the sign, of course. So we're going to flip the sign by saying negative of that so i'll let you work the math on that but you can see of course if we plug that in here if we say this is going to equal this number minus this number then that's it and we can double check our work then by pulling out the calculator and saying all right does that work if we take the 1530 minus the 1085 that's going to give us the 445 so that works so if there's only three numbers you can probably uh, plug something in there and then double check it if it's a obviously it's a subtraction problem in this case Next one says that a firm expects to sell 25,600 25,600 25, units of its product at $18 per unit pre-tax income is predicted to be 60,600 if the variable cost per unit are $9 the total fixed cost must be what all right so we can, we can break this out and put what we know in here. Once again, we're going to take our sales minus our variable cost. That'll give us our contribution margin less the fixed cost. That's going to give us basically our net income before taxes. So on the sales side, we're going to start with sales and we have um, firm expects to sell 20 units. So we have units that we're going to have and then the cost per unit. So we'll have cost. So the units and the cost, and then we'll have the total, right? So we, we have to do this calculation here. So we got 25, six units, they cost 18, uh, I'm sorry, and this is cost sales or cost. It's gonna be one or the other. We can go ahead and center those if we would like. Go on the home tab, go into the center and we can make it bold. All right, so then we got, this equals the 25, six times 18. So they, they have 25, six units times 18. That means we're going to have sales of 460,800 variable cost. Remember those change in relation to the number of sales. That's why we're breaking it out this way rather than a standard, um, income statement, because we can do this kind of estimate estimation this way. So we're going to say, okay, the variable cost for the two, five, six units is going to be $9, $9 per unit that's given to us here. Therefore, the variable costs are gonna be the 25,600 times nine. That's the cost per unit. And there we have that. And then we're gonna say minus, that's gonna be the contribution margin. Contribution margin is going to equal the sales price minus the variable cost. And that's our contribution margin. So I'll put an underline there. 
And then what we do is we subtract out the fixed cost. So remember, there's only two types of costs we're kind of looking at here, breaking them out between variable and fixed. Fixed cost is the unknown. That's what we don't know. We're going to go ahead and underline that. What they gave us, once again, is they gave us the end number, uh, which was to be income. So this is pre-tax income. So we're going to say income is going to be this minus this number but we don't know that number so we can't do that yet and so but they gave us that number it's going to be 60,600 so we got to say okay this minus this is going to equal that and obviously again that's going to be a subtraction problem you can kind of see it you can say well if this minus this is going to equal that then i got to subtract it's got to be the difference between this and that you could write that down algebraically 230 400 minus something which in this case is fixed cost that's our unknown equals the 60,600 so we can see it algebraically we're solving for fixed cost which means we're gonna have to subtract this from each side which will leave us with a negative and then we'll have to remove the negative from each side so I'm just gonna do the subtraction problem and just say that fixed cost equals the uh, I'm gonna do the 200 and what well, would be something like this we could say it's the negative uh, to flip the sign of 60,600 minus the 230,400. So I took a couple steps in one. And there and there's a subtraction problem. So we can see it's a subtraction problem here, basically. We're just going to say it's the 230,400 minus the 60,600. And there's no real problem to make an estimate if we're not totally sure, because we can just double check it. Say, well, does that work? 230,400 minus the 169,800. Does that equal 60,600? It does. All right, so that looks like it's okay. Next one says, during March, firm expects its total sales to be 163,000, its total variable cost to be 95,3, and its total fixed cost to be 25,3. The contribution margin for March is, so this is gonna be our same calculation. We're gonna start with sales. How do we calculate contribution margin? We take the sales first, and that's gonna be the 163. They gave us that number, less variable cost. And they actually gave us that number, it's 95,300, and that should give us the contribution margin, which is just going to be sales minus the variable cost. So all we have to do is basically know the formula that we've been using in order to do that to get to the variable costs. Note that they gave us some extra information, which is going to leave us wondering <laughs> that, you know, when we do the problem, like, why do they give us that extra information? But that's what happens sometimes in the multiple choice questions. Next one says a company uh, company's product sells for $12.02 per unit and has a $5.03 per unit variable cost. The company's total fixed costs are $97,900. The break-even point in units is what? So notice was a key fa factor here is we're looking for the break-even in units. We've looked for the break-even in total sales dollars. In this case, we're going to calculate the break-even in units. How many units do we need to produce in order to break even? The way we're going to do that is we're going to take the contribution margin per unit and divide it into the uh, fixed cost. So let's take a look at that and see if that makes sense. We're going to say, okay, the, the sales per unit is the 12.02 and the variable cost per unit is 5.03. I'm going to have to add some decimals here, obviously. So I'm just going to highlight this whole area where my calculations will be. I'm going to go to the home tab. I'm going to go to the numbers. I'm going to add some decimals like so. All right. So that means that we got the uh, contribution margin per unit. So contribution margin per unit is going to be we, we get we sell them all for $12.02 and they cost $5.03. Therefore, we're walking away after variable costs with $6.99 per unit that we sell. So now we can just figure out, well, how many units do we have to sell to like pay the fixed cost, to like basically pay the rent, the, the rent being one of the major fixed costs, right? The rent doesn't change from month to month. So how many units after the variable cost do we have to pay to, to cover this? So in order to do that, we're gonna take the fixed cost of 97,900 and divide it by the, the contribution margin Per unit, I'm just gonna say that equals this cell, which is this 699. We're gonna divide those two out. So we're gonna take the 979 uh, divided by the uh, 6.99, $6.99, 6 
that means we're going to need to sell about 14,005. And obviously note that, you know, it doesn't divide evenly. So that means that we're probably going to have to round up if we want to, uh, to hit that break even point. So we'll probably be 14,006. Now, if you wanted to see the dollar sales, you could multiply that times uh, the sales price. In this case, if, if they asked for the dollar sales, which was 12.02, per unit so this is how many units we need to make times the the sales price and we could then come up with the dollars that would be this times the 12.02 then would be the sales in dollars next one says that a product sell for 260 per unit and its variable cost per unit are 189 the fixed costs are 432,000 if the firm wants to earn 38,020 pre-tax income how many units must be sold Okay, so this is going to be similar to the break-even in units, but now we're just going to add to it the, the amount of profit that we want to get. So first thing we need to do is get the contribution margin per unit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the sales per unit, and that's going to be the 260. That's how much we sell our items for in this case. And then we're going to take the variable cost per unit because those things change in a, in a similar way, unlike fixed cost. And that's going to be our contribution margin per unit. So we're going to subtract that out. We're going to take the 260 minus the 189 contribution margin per unit. Now remember, it, it, on in terms of the fixed cost, the break even in units, we just took the fixed cost divided by this. That's how many how much money that we are walking away from after each unit sales. So it would make sense then to say, well, if the rent is whatever the rent is, then how many of those units do we got to pay? in order to sell in order to just basically pay the fixed costs that we know are going to happen now the only difference when we're projecting income is that we're going to take the fixed cost which they gave us to be 432,000, and we're going to add to it the income that we want to earn we want to earn pre-tax income we're estimating 38,020. we had to add that 20 on there for some reason so that's probably going to all right, and then that means that if we add those up, then we're going to say this is going to be the 432 plus the 3820. That This is the number then that we need to clear with our 71 units. So we need to say how many units do we need to sell in order for the 71 to add up to this 470,020. And that's going to be the contribution margin per unit here is the 71. And then we're just going to divide this out. So we're going to divide this out. We're going to say this equals the 470,020 uh, divided by the 71 contribution margin per unit would mean that we would need to sell about 6,620 units. If we wanna know how much dollar revenues would, would we need in order to make that 38,020 pre-tax net income, we can multiply times the sales price. We're gonna sell those for 260, remember, up here. And that means that we would need revenue of 6,620 times the 260 of 1,721,200. Company's break even point in units is 1,700. The sales price per unit is 12 and the variable cost per unit is 9. If the company sells 3,900 units, what is net income? So we're going to do our calculation for net income. We're going to have our three headers, though, are going to be the number of units that we have. Then we're going to have the uh, sales price and the cost per unit. And then we're going to have the total over here. So this is going to be what we have. I'm going to make that bold. We can underline it. We can center it. And we got these sales. So the units that we're going to sell, they say that we're going to sell in our projection 3,900 units. And the uh, sales price per unit, 12. So we're going to say the total then would equal the 3,900 times 12. And that would give us uh, the 46.8. Then we've got the variable cost. This is how we calculate uh, the, within this calculation. And we're going to say that the variable cost per units are... are uh, 3,900 units again and the variable costs are 9 therefore we're going to say this equals the 39 times the $9 cost per unit and that will give us the total variable cost 35,100 this gives us the contribution margin so contribution margin again 3,900 units and we can get the contribution margin per unit I'm going to go ahead and underline this home tab underline contribution margin per unit would equal the 12 minus the 9. So after each unit we sell, we walk away with 3. 
uh, dollars, and we, we can calculate this one of two ways. We can say we want the 46.8 minus the 35.1, and that'll give us the 11.7. We also could have calculated by saying that we want the 3.9 times the 3, the, the contribution margin per unit, to get the 11.7. Now the next thing that we would need are the fixed costs. The fixed costs, that's what they don't know. They didn't give us the fixed costs. We don't know what the fixed costs are, and and that would give us the ending number here, which uh, is going to be net income. And net income we do not know as well. That's what we're looking for. So a question, how can we back into this fixed cost? How can we get that number? Next calculation that they gave us, they gave us that the break-even point is in units, 1,700. So we can take a look at that calculation. How do we get the uh, break-even calculation? The break-even calculation, you'll recall, is fixed cost. So fixed cost, and and that's going to be divided by the contribution margin. So the contribution margin per unit, let's say, per unit. So we know what that number is. That's three. And we know that the break-even point is, in units, one seven. So here we have it, we're looking for this fixed cost, that's what we're looking for, and we and we know that it's going to be this divided by that is 1 7. This divided by that is 1 7, therefore if it's a division to get to here, it's probably multiplication to get back to there. Uh, we can verify that by saying, well it's going to be fixed cost is going to uh, be divided by three has got to equal the one seven. That's our formula. And therefore to solve for fixed cost, we, if it's division, we have to do the opposite. We got to multiply. So it would be fixed cost is going to equal the three times one seven. Uh, so do that again, equals three times one seven. And that gives us our five one. So let's do that one more time. It's a division to get from here to here. So it's probably multiplication, which is going to be three times one seven. And there's no real risk in us doing that because we can always just check our work. We can say, well, does that work? Let's see if I took the five one divided by three, then we get the one seven. So that looks to be correct. That now is our fixed cost. So now we had to find the fixed cost. So that's going to be the five one. And now we can finally get to our net income, which is going to be where we were before, the contribution margin of 11.7 minus the 5.1. So that one was a little tricky to back into a few things there.